Hey everybody, back again with another one today. I'm uh, going to be looking at uh, Orco from He-Man. Sorry for the, the delay there. I was uh, looking to save it to the page or share it to the page so that we can get that going. So that everybody on the network can see it. Yay! <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> that's where we're at right now, okay? Gonna be knocking out Orco. Um, get my lead for my pencil here, and we're ready to do this. If you don't know Orco, Orco is the um, mischievous little wizard from the original 1980s He-Man, and uh, he appeared in the reboot for Cartoon Network as well, which is cool. Uh, but you know, being an 80s kid uh, of about 10 years old or so when this came out I really liked the idea of sticking with the original and uh, it's just nostalgic but uh, yeah I, I really love this guy because he used to try to do the best and the kindest things and then always ended up almost blowing everything up and the reason for that was because of the fact that he was a mishap uh, by nature and he was supposed to be um, the king in Eternia's, uh, not his wizard, but more his jester, because he was a wizard that was failing. And the king let him stay because of the fact that he wasn't a wizard per se, but he, would, he made him laugh. So he loved the idea of that and kept him on sight in the castle. And uh, that's pretty much where it came from there. And then he found out mistakenly when Prince Adam got the power of He-Man, Orko came across it by mistake. And uh, that was because he's also supposed to be Prince Adam's, uh, one of Prince Adam's guardians during the younger years. And um, kind of like Snarf was at the same time for uh, the Thundercats for uh, Lionel. And this guy got just the short end of the stick on everything magically possible. He would mess up so much, and that would be the extent of it. And uh, he was a lot of the comic relief in He-Man, uh, you know, for the calmer times. Because during the, the battles itself, you know, the, the villains were just awesome, but they were goofy at the same time. And, you know, they would have uh, physical mistakes trying to over overreach their abilities and whatnot. And... Uh, trying to take down He-Man and the uh, people of Eternia. And what ended up happening was he would have so many things go wrong and just blow stuff up constantly. And and no matter how good he did tenfold, it would work one in a million. So um, it was always interesting to have that go on. But... This young character right here, this little man right here, is going to be easy, 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 and knock him out. Now, you may have noticed, this is a Halloween card, a trick-or-treat card, right? And because of his powers going off, he tried to do a trick and spell out happy, uh, happy um, Halloween and put up a little pumpkin up here, and it ended up saying happy birthday. That's why he's got the stunned look on his face, because he messed up, and... Um, He's basically saying in his high-pitched voice, you know, something along the line of, you know, sarcastically, Happy Halloween. So um, we've got that going on, and I, th I just thought this would be a fun one to do. And, yes, I will be doing some of these cards in the series. Uh, I love these characters, and I did mention doing some of them, so uh, this is where we're at. And I'm, I'm going to do <clears throat> a few of these. So... Hey, Jasper. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Uh, just because if you, if you guys can't see this on the YouTube channel later, um, Jasper just commented that uh, it was a good likeness and that um, he liked the message behind uh, going behind Orco there. But uh, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. That means a lot because that means I'm doing the job right. But... Uh, yeah, this character just always busted me up to no end. And uh, 
I was kind of quirky like this as a kid because I, not to brag or anything, but I was a little bit smarter than most people. And the other kids knew it. <laughs> so, so I was a little different. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I can feel the, uh, the eyes leering when you do something really cool and then something goes awry because of trying too hard to fit in and whatnot. But I think that's every kid in every case. You know, I don't think it's just one person. I think I don't think it's just one type of kid. I think everybody feels that way. And we either hit the mark and hit the groove or we don't. And, uh, you know, it's just school. World, The world goes on. You know, I mean, you can either take it traumatically and go all uh, Edgar Allan Poe with it, or you can just go, wow, I was a goof, and move on. You know, and I... I take the, the step of the ladder. I constantly say, hey, I'm a goof. So it is what it is, and uh, we go from there. But this guy right here, he was always in the thick of it for some reason. Um, I did not want to do that. I blocked out that I did that scarf too quick, and I cut into where his shoulder should be. <clears throat> I wanted his shoulder to come up here like that to kind of get that scrunched look. But uh, anyway, yeah, I mean, if you had a childhood like that, just own it, move on. You've li you lived through it. And unless someone traumatized you literally, like, you know, stuffed you in a locker or something just extremely juvenile like that, not a professional. You might want to see one. <laughs> so, um Depending on how it goes down, determines how you come out, but also in how you decide to see it. So, to each their own. Now, I've got him holding a little bit of a, a cauldron here, and having him trick or treat a little bit. So, he's trying to say Happy Halloween to everybody, and uh, it didn't quite work out the way he wanted it to. I thought this would be a fun one for uh, the young people that I have that watch these on my channel. And uh, just kind of lighten the mood a little bit, you know. Have a little fun with it because some of these things just get a little dark. They get a little dark. Stop scaring me. And everybody likes to do the vicious stuff, you know, the typical... Uh, manslaughter, you know, mass murderer, serial killer type characters, you know, or the movie monsters for this time of year. And uh, that's great and all for, you know, uh, Inktober and all that. It's just I wanted to keep it a little lighter. Give the youngsters something fun to hang on to and maybe expose a couple of people to uh, a little bit of uh, cartoon history. That would be cool, too. That's not a bad thing. And for the parents that may be watching, you know, old cartoons are bad for kids. Just understand that, you know, for one, the guy you're having your kids watch right now grew up on these cartoons. So, number two, these cartoons always had lessons at the end of them. So, you know, uh, they were the first cartoons to do that and have a lesson at the end of them. The companies that did that uh, were started by these lines of cartoons, you know, from uh, Filmimation and uh, some of the Mattel cartoons because the G.I. Joe and the uh, Transformers were really big on that. But these particular characters and cartoons started that beforehand because they wanted to be educational as well. And they had psychologists on staff working to make sure the moral of the story was okay for kids and that the violence level was okay for kids at the time. Seriously. Especially on He-Man and Thundercats, because they were the two biggest properties. They were ahead of their time. <clears throat> so, maybe we all should have had a little more educational cartooning like this, you know, in our lives. But, anyway, I digress. I get too, too deep. I digress. That's fun, not fun. But... 
yeah, this card is going to be a part of the collection that has been going on. I know everybody's been asking me about the whole thing with uh, with the 175 that are going into Volume 1 of the Sketch Card uh, series. And, yes, I'm still doing the cards. Thank you very much. I appreciate all the support. I got, like, 50 or 60 messages right out of the gate asking me if I was still going to do um, – I'm trying to rough that up so it'll look like a rougher cauldron. But, um, anyway, I got a bunch of – request to keep going with the card series and I so appreciate that. You guys are awesome. Thank you for joining in and uh, tolerating me each and every day. <laughs> so <laughs> I will be doing this for a little while longer. But um, <clears throat> I've been asked to show if I would show some of the uh, Boba Fett from uh, the special session yesterday for Kevin. I will stop and do that right quick. It's almost inked up. Almost. Hey, Tom. Glad you made it, man. But as you can see, there you go. It's almost inked up. Pretty cool. Got the middle section there. I went kind of, I started at the bottom and went kind of around this way. And then came up to the head, so now I'm right in the middle. But, uh, yep. I'll have that finished up today, which will be awesome. And now back to our regular schedule program. Yay! Everybody that wanted to see Orko was like, quit it! Get back to Orko! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You can send all the dirty messages to Kevin. Because he's the one that had... <laughs> he's the one that had, had the drawing up, so he wanted to see it. But, uh, no, that's pretty cool. And, you know, Orko gets a bad rap as one of the weakest characters in the He-Man universe. But the thing is, he's one of the strongest. Because he's the weakest, he's got, physically, he's got the most to overcome. <clears throat> so, I always find that interesting. I, I like to support the underdogs, as it were. Just kind of filling this in a little bit because he hasn't got any candy yet. And with putting happy birthday up behind him, I'm sure he won't get much. Just saying. So, pull a little shadow under that ear. That shadow is not normally there, but to add a little depth and pop to him, I'm going to put it there anyway. Just to kind of thicken that seam up a little bit too. I dig this character like no other on that series. You know, and all my friends when I was younger, and the funny thing was, all my friends used to like Cringer the most. Not full on Battle Cat, but Cringer the character uh, that that became Battle Cat used to bust me up to no end because people were like, "I want to be Cringer." Like really? Yes, he's cute. He's a big kitty. I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm not a cat person. I have nothing against cats, and I won't be mean to them if they're there. Um, it, you know, like I mentioned yesterday, my daughter has a couple. But uh, I'm not a fan of cats. I'm just not a cat person. I'm more of a dog person. But they can get on your nerves, too. But whatever. Um Let's see here. What else do I want to do? Da -da -da. That's pretty much it except for the background here. I'm going to thicken up this birthday and happy a little bit. Kind of make that pop up. It was funny yesterday. Uh, somebody asked to buy Kevin's... Um, Boba Fett, and I <laughs> I felt bad because, you know, not everybody gets the opportunity to be on when I'm on live, so they don't have a lot of opportunity to grab these things when I do them, and I don't do them on a regular basis, as you guys know, so it was kind of funny, but I still said no, and uh, 
the guy said that he would either have it or he would never follow me again. I was like, really? He's like, no. <laughs> so in that alone, I decided to draw him a Boba Fett card, and I'm going to send it to him. Now, <laughs> that was classic. He got me. It was funny. I was like just kind of distraught because was, I was upset with the fact that somebody was so upset about not getting in on that. And I was like, well... But, uh, yeah, people can get a little weird about that stuff, but at least it was the guy was being humorous and messing with me uh, when I told him no. He said he had to try, and that was the extent of it. But... Anyway, and I'm so excited about this Kickstarter. I got the page set up, and then I found out that uh, Indiegogo and Kickstarter are changing their policies now. You have to have a standard uh, checking account to get the funds because if they can't validate or prove you through uh, PayPal's checking account set up, they won't fund you and release your money, and that's rough, man. Um I had a good friend that got hung up with that, and I was telling you guys about it a little bit the other day. There we go, Orco. But, um, yeah, I found that really harsh that the, uh, the uh, payment system wouldn't honor his path. So if you guys get into doing any kind of uh, crowdfunding or anything like that, be sure to check that stuff out and make sure of where you're at so you don't get burned on it because they changed the policy. Uh, on him in the mid path and it just chewed him up and now they won't let him out of his funds and I won't say who it is because of the protection of his situation and I don't want them to backlash on him for me saying something but um, yeah that's where that's at so but anyway more to come tomorrow I know this was a quick one but uh, that's what I've got and I've got to get back to this uh, I want to finish this ink, uh, this ink up on uh, Boba Fett this afternoon so that I can get to coloring it tomorrow and uh, get back to page work tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Share this with your friends, please. Pass it on. Have a happy Halloween. Be safe. Be nice to each other. And get a good laugh out of it if it did for you. I appreciate it. Share it and uh, spread it around. And uh, make some other people smile and wonder who this guy is and check him out. So talk to you tomorrow.